This is the Jumpstart Trading video for Friday, December 5th. Uh, we have um, a, uh, a pretty serious uh, or, or pretty significant uh, report coming out in a couple of minutes here. Uh, it is uh, Unemployment Friday, as it's called. So the employment situation numbers come out. It's the first Friday of every month. It is now 7.28 a.m. Central Time. That uh, report comes out in a little less than two minutes. So I wanted uh, to go ahead and trade that and uh, show you how we handle these uh, these kinds of uh, important reports. Uh, just a quick look at the big picture. Nothing has changed. We're still in this descending wedge pattern on the daily. Uh, if that The descending wedge again is bullish, so if um, if we break this line this uh, top trend lined up here then we're likely to have higher prices uh, swing chart has been relatively choppy we did have a big down move yesterday afternoon but we've come back up to correct uh, a portion of that uh, in the pre-market range uh, we did have activity chop through that range and then down uh, come back up and test the lower level of that and then come on down even more uh, we don't place a whole lot of emphasis on uh, on the pre-market range on a when we have a report coming out like that, uh, like this today. It's a pretty important report, so we just want to be be on standby and be prepared to trade in um, either direction. Uh, here again, gap is is uh, not significant. We're an hour away from the regular open anyhow, so uh, so let's go to our intraday screen. And um, just be prepared. All right, you can see activity is picking up a bit here, even though it's not quite 7.30. We're uh, less than a minute away. Uh, as soon as that report comes out, we should see. Th this is all just you know, positioning before. That actually, okay, there it goes, and um, we've got a big downside here. Now, our next uh, question is well, are we going to continue downside or are we going to correct some of that? And I'm principally going to be concerned with the 30 tick here. We do have a potential short right there. Uh, let's see, the low of that bar is uh, 82.05, so we could go in at 82.04. Oh, that's the low of the day. Let's go ahead and short that, or not short it. Go ahead and put a position in too short. We're going to change the center on this to uh, disabled. So now it won't jump around. So we've got a range. We could put a buy in here in case we get a strong reaction the other direction. It's, uh, the high of that bar is 82.71, so we could put a buy in at 82.72. Okay, so we've bracketed the market. We're uh, ready to sell on a break of this low and ready to buy on a break of this high. Larger picture, it looks like a uh, descending triangle, which is bearish. These kind of um, large range bars kind of, um, oh, they don't make for uh, clean patterns. If this, if this was a true descending triangle, we'd want to see... Uh, uh, a cleaner down move in here. So let's just uh, see what happens. We're waiting for the market to either break that level or this level down here. We don't have any NYSE tick readings to, to read when you're trading uh, pre-market or post-market. 
Again, the NYSE tick is the number of stocks on the New York Stock Exchange trading higher minus the number of stocks trading lower. Stocks aren't trading yet, so oh, we better get let's get this up here so we can track what's going on. On our buy side, and boom, we're triggered in. We got our quick six. Oh, we got 12 out of that. Okay, so we got to move our stop to break in, break even. Oh, all right. Again, that market was very fast, but we got our uh, 6, 12, 24 very quickly. So we're fine with that. All right, so now we want to reevaluate the situation. Uh, I'm going to leave this line in there because it, it could provide support. Well, no, we just peeked down through that support. So let's see what develops. <laughs> Nothing clean at this point, just no, uh, no clean patterns. Uh, well, we do have somewhat of a, a, a bearish flag forming here, uh, <clears throat> especially after a long down move like this. Um, see, bear flags are, uh, you know, here again, it's difficult to interpret because we just had the employment report come out. But um, this is essentially what a bear flag looks like. It's... Uh, you have a, a big down move, and then followed by that, you have a, some some choppy action that moves uh, opposite to the down move. Uh, and then, what we just broke to the downside on that. Uh, I'm not going to say that's a tradable event, but it is a bearish, uh, a bearish signal there. Let's see if we can get a swing in here. You know, one thing I neglected to do, and we better get it done right now, is to cancel that previous order. It could still be a, a potential short entry, but right now I, I'm focused on more immediate price action. That was that trade was based on price action that happened a couple of minutes ago. So now we want to be more focused on what's happening now. Well, let's see. The low of that bar is uh, 82.29. I'm not quite ready to place a short yet. I'd like to see more of a, a move away from that, which we're starting to get now. So let's let's go ahead and put our order in. We're going to sell three at 82.28. Yeah, the low of that bar is 82.29, so we're going to sell at 82.28. Uh, we do have a, a spike and ledge forming here, which um, those of you who read the newsletter last night are familiar with. Uh, spike and ledge, we've got a large down move, uh, and these are typically good to trade after uh, a significant economic report. Uh, spike and ledge, we have a, a large spike move, and then the market uh, retraces part of that move, uh, and your, your ledge, okay, we're triggered into our short. Let's go ahead and pay attention to that. Okay, here's our six ticks, here's our 12 ticks, here's our stop. Okay, we got our six. We're triggering in at uh, 82.28, let's say 82.27, no, 82.28. And as soon as we get our 12, if we get our 12, we'll take profits on, or uh, excuse me, if we get our 12, we'll move our stop to break even. Okay, 82.28. And let's see if we get our 24. Let's see the low of the day. Boy, 
boy, that's uh. All right, we got it. Okay, so we got that. Um, the reason I hesitated when I was figuring out our uh, our entry point is because uh, you'll note here we've got 82, 28, and uh, I think it's a third. Um, that's why. Uh, that just means that we had split entries. We had um, two contracts at 82.29 and one at uh, uh, 82.28, you know, something like that. Oh, probably two at 82.28 and one at 82.29. Um, so I just took the lower of that number. I rounded down. All right, I was talking about something. Oh, the spike and ledge. I will resume that. I just want to state, uh, I want to pay attention to what price action is doing now. Yeah, we could have a strong move, a reactive move. We're, we're overdue. So let's put in a long at 82.30. Oh, we're going to be too late. No, we're not. 82.30. All right, so we, if we are able to break this point, I expect uh, somewhat of a reactive spike move. It's still looking bearish. So, uh, in if we were in doing more advanced trading, I probably wouldn't target the 24 points on that reactive move. It depends on how the market reacted. It's one of the the uh, rare times I'll actually get out of the trade um, before fulfilling our mechanical parameters. All right, so we're triggered into a long. Notice we did get a double dot there, and that double dot uh, probably coincided with our entry point, or the, the entry for the double dot. All right, we got our 6R12, 82.30. And we might get stopped out. See, that's what I mean about, uh, you know, I'm more bearish than I am bullish at this point. So uh, I, if that's okay. If we get stopped out, that's fine. All right, we did get stopped up. Okay, on our last contract, so we got six, uh, twenty. F uh, excuse me, six, twelve, and zero. On that last trade, but I was talking about the double dots here. Um, the double dots here again. Let's review what the double dots are. We don't use the double dots all the time. Just because we have a double dot fire, that doesn't mean we take the trade. Uh, it has to uh, agree with our bigger picture. In this particular instance, it, it's a little risky doing the double dots on a, on a day like today because it was an important economic report. The uh, volatility can be extreme, although it's relatively tame for today, actually. We had, what, a 100-point move. That's relatively tame. Um, so we, we could consider the double dots today, but, uh, you know, typically you only want to use the double dots when you have either a... Uh, uh, if you have a trending market, you want to take the double dots in that direction. So if we had a strong trend to the downside here, we'd want to just take the uh, the sell double dots. We didn't have any, so that's uh, of no concern there. On a mildly trending day, you can uh, uh, you, you can uh, they work better on mildly trending days if you're taking the double dots in the same direction as the mild trend. Uh, let's see what we got here. We might break even lower. So the low is 8,200. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell two ticks below. Only because sometimes you'll get these uh, you'll get these tests of the previous low. You'll get the test a one tick test of the previous low, and it won't actually break through. So if we do. Uh, if we do break through, I want it to break through by two ticks. We do have uh, oscillator divergence, bullish divergence on the one minute between this point and this point. Now that that just means us that the the current swing pivot low is likely uh, at an end meaning this swing lower here and you're going to have some sort of reactive move sometimes you can trade that uh, on a day like today I wouldn't trade that I'd be more cautious 
uh, but bullish divergences typically occur in bearish markets. I know that sounds confusing, but it does make sense if you sit back and think about it. Uh, so what that, in essence, is it's giving support to the bearish side. The fact that we have a bullish divergence lends support to the bearish side. Uh, th this is looking even more bearish at this point. Oh, we've just got this... Uh, We've got this. Uh, let me draw it in. We've got this triangle forming here. Um, the interesting thing to note, though, is on a larger frame, on a larger time frame, and I probably should have noticed that first. We do have a bit of a descending wedge, and descending wedges are bullish. You know, a flat-bottomed triangle is uh, bearish but a descending wedge is bullish. So we might have some sort of reactive move to the upside coming up here. Now one thing we haven't done is taken a look at our swing chart. Um, well, we're still swinging to the downside. Let's see, this video is about 16 minutes long. Um, I think I'm going to wrap this up. I just don't like making these videos too long here, but uh, I, I did want to show you how we trade the uh, an important uh, economic report like that. Uh, again, we just you don't want to have any position as the report is coming out. You want to see, you're not trading the report, you're trading the market's reaction to the report. That's the important thing. To try to guess what the market is going to do ahead of time is um, fruitless, at least in my opinion. So we wait until the report actually comes out, and then we trade that event. Okay, let's call that the end of today's video, and uh, thanks for taking a look. We'll see you next time.